In today's video guys we are going to discuss how to make an HDR video and today we'll be working with Apple ProRes RAW, also with Apple Log and with the regular log footage with the Sony FX30 which is filming me right now. And the quick disclaimer guys, you can only watch this video properly on a true HDR display like on the MacBook Pro with XDR display or you can use your iPhone, iPad or an Android device which supports true HDR. HDR 400, it's like more of a marketing thing, so please watch it on an HDR display, otherwise you'll have pretty weird colors. And first of all guys, you need to properly shoot an HDR content. I prefer using logs, like Apple Log, S Log, C Log for Canon or F Log for Fujifilm, etc. In Log you get better dynamic range and it's much easier to work with HDR if you shoot in Log. And also guys, please use 10-bit codecs, because you'll need a lot of work with the colors. And first thing you need to do in Final Cut Pro is of course to make a new library. You hit File, New, Library. And then you can make this library like an HDR or an SDR. Here I have my HDR library and if I go to Modify you'll see this one. Wide Gamut HDR or High Dynamic Range. And you need to make this library from the very beginning in HDR. And I would like to suggest to just keep it in HDR for HDR projects. But if you need the STR projects, like the regular ones, just make another library and work in this one, because if you mix and match, you can have slightly different colors and you don't want that to happen. And then you can go ahead and hit File, New and Project in this HDR library. And right here you can choose the White Gamut HDR Rec 2020 PQ. I do prefer PQ over the HLG, so my suggestion is just to stick to the PQ. If you choose something like this, it'll be the standard gamut, not HDR. So we pick this one. And we create a new project to pick your resolution, your frame rate, etc. So here we have the project and now let's try to color grade something in HDR. And by the way guys, I am recording my screen in HDR as well. With the MacBook you can record in HDR, but sometimes the colors and especially the exposure might not match, so I can see perfectly fine, like the highlights for example, but on your screen it might look like overexposed. So don't pay a huge attention to it, I'll color grade the shots properly and you'll see the properly color graded shots in the video as well. Maybe the screen recording will not be as accurate. And one more thing guys is when you go to the scopes in HDR timeline you'll see that we have from 0 to 10,000. I mean it's something like nits in the brightness area and my screen from the MacBook Pro 16 inch it's an XDR display and it can go up to 1600 nits in HDR mode and that is why I'll be targeting like 1k to 2k in the highest clipping points of my highlights. Okay guys, now let's try to color grade Apple ProRes RAW recording in HDR timeline. So here we have the extended settings and here we have the modified ProRes RAW settings. We choose the iPhone ProRes RAW, here we can choose the ISO and the white balance. We unclick as shot white balance obviously, we can change the white balance right here. Then we go to custom demosaic and those settings are the perfect ones in my opinion. And then we can go and change it to Apple Lock 2 so we can work with log format and here in the camera lot we can choose the epilogue 2 and there you go. Here we have the HDR clip because as you can tell at 1k and at 2k we have approximately the highest value of exposure, the brightest point and maybe on the screen recording it is not as accurate so let's go to the color wheels and if I disable the color wheels you can tell that we have a very slight correction on top of the actual uh, lot from Apple themselves. And you can definitely go up higher, but I can see a very overexposed image, probably because my monitor is only 1600 nits in HDR mode, and this is like 4000 nits, 10,000 nits, so I prefer to stick to about 1 to 2000 nits, or 1 to 2000k on the scopes right here, or right here. And as you can tell guys, it's already looking pretty good if you are watching it on a proper HDR monitor. So here I have another ProRes RAW recording and as you can tell it is already color graded to a certain degree, maybe it's slightly too warm. So here we have also reached about 1K and here I have an almost overexposed building, maybe it even looks overexposed on your recording due to uh, MacBook's recording of the HDR mode. And here is one more regular mode, it's not ProRes RAW, it's just the regular Apple Log. And as you can tell we're not using in-camera LUTs and it is not any raw format, just the HDR Apple Log. And here we have only two things. We have the color wheels and we have the custom LUT. 
And guys, if you use the custom LUT as usually on the SDR timeline, you get something like this. So if you set the Rec 709, Rec 709 as you do regularly on the SDR timeline with your LUT, it's not gonna work. So you need to choose the same Rec 2020 PQ as your main uh, project setting. And there you go, you have pretty nice image. If it is not showing you properly on the screen recording, I'll show you the same image separately so you can definitely tell the difference and that it is looking actually nice. And I hope on your display it does look nice because in mine it does look really, really good. Here is another example. And as you can tell, once again, it's uh, between 1K and 2K in terms of the brightest point. And still guys, I can see the texture in the clouds. And to me, it's looking perfectly fine. I hope on your monitor as well. And here we have different examples of the same color grade. It's nothing too fancy and too crazy. And here is another example. It's pretty simple to color grade. So you simply go to LUT. You can use your any basically log LUT. So for example, I've been using the Utopia. Uh, I guess it was this one. And then I can go to color wheels and I'll grab the color wheels and put them above the LUT so I can work with the HDR full potential. And then I can go ahead and try to, uh -huh. it's not working properly because I didn't set the PQ right here, right? And right now I can work properly with this footage. I can go ahead and raise up the highlights. I can go ahead and work with the shadows and the midtones as well. And uh, I'll show you the end result. The only thing you need to do with the LUT is to go to Rec 2020 PQ and Rec 2020 PQ to input and to the output. It is that simple and now you get a real HDR timeline which you can upload to YouTube and it will apply the HDR to your clip. And of course you need to go to the share tab, you need to set export file, go to settings and here I prefer to use HEVC 10 bit. And if you use 8-bit, it will show you that HDR is not actually <laughs> really compatible with 8-bit codecs. You need 10-bit, and that is why I prefer to use this 10-bit codec. And here you can see the Rec 2020 PQ color space. And that's basically it. You simply export it and you upload it to YouTube. And there you go. So I do recommend you trying HDR workflows, but not all the videos are greatly looking in HDR. For example, for talking headshots, I don't see a reason to record and to work in HDR. But all in all, guys, now you know how to do it in Final Cut Pro. And if you have any questions, please leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video, which is the Apple ProRes RAW overview by myself. See you there, guys. Take care.